Chef Anna Olson in her kitchen. If you're looking for a cake that's pretty and playful and just says, happy birthday, well, my confetti birthday cake will be your new go-to. And it starts with a beautiful white cake just speckled with sprinkles. I start with two and two thirds cup of cake and pastry flour. Now this style of cake is called a white velvet cake and it's tender and delicate and moist. It's really the ideal birthday cake and you do want to use cake and pastry flour for that tenderness. At the same time as I start sifting the flour, I'm going to add in two cups of granulated sugar. She sifts them together, tapping her sieve over a bowl. Just work the two in at the same time. You can do this in a large bowl and use electric beaters if you wish. Now she combines. The rest of the flour, the rest of the sugar. And then for leavening, I have a tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. She adds all of those to the flour and sugar and sifts everything into the bowl. I've cut up three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter and let it soften up to room temperature. So I add this to the dry mix and on low speed, work the butter in until I no longer see any visible bits. She uses a stand mixer. And a few minutes later. All right, once you see a nice sandy texture, then you know you're ready to add half a cup of vegetable oil. And I've measured out one and one quarter cups of buttermilk, and I'm going to pour in about three quarters of a cup of that in with the oil. And I'll blend this at the same time until evenly combined. And minutes later. Butter and oil together does two things. The butter adds flavor, the oil adds moisture and tenderness, and that quantity of fat actually replaces the fact that there are no whole eggs in this recipe. I've got five large egg whites at room temperature, so no whole eggs. That makes this white velvet cake so white, so the color of your sprinkles pop right through. Now I'll add my remaining buttermilk. To the egg whites. And a tablespoon of vanilla extract. A splash straight from the bottle. I just use a fork to loosen up the whites. That way they work into the batter. I add this all at once. To the batter in the stand mixer. And now I'll mix on low speed until blended and then increase the speed to medium, medium high to really build some structure for about two to three minutes. There we go. Just look at that beautiful light color. She taps the mixing paddle clean against the bowl as she removes it. And right before you put the batter into your pans, you want to stir in your half a cup of sprinkles. You want to stir them in very quickly just so the color doesn't start pulling into the batter. Using a spatula. There we go. Done. Now she grabs some round spring form pans. And I've got my three eight inch cake pans, greased and floured with the bottoms lined with parchment. If your butter is colder, you may find your batter is thicker, in which case you need to spread it in the pan. She fills each with batter. These go into a 350 oven for 40 minutes. You check the doneness by inserting a skewer in the center. When it comes out clean of crumbs, then you know your cakes are done. She pops them in the oven. While the cakes are baking, I can prepare the base for the frosting. And it too is a little something different. She sets down ingredients. It's sometimes called an ermine buttercream, and it is so silky. And it's because you cook flour and sugar into milk as the base of the frosting. And that makes it so silky once you add the butter. I'll pour two cups of milk into my pot, and I'll whisk in two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour. And now, while whisking, I want to bring this up to a full boil over medium-high heat. Now that I have some bubbles, I keep the temperature the same, medium-high, and I add two cups of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt. And this sugar will melt into this mixture. And that's what makes this boiled milk frosting so silky. You don't have the grit of undissolved sugar. Now I need to cook this out another three minutes. Later. Here we go. Now my mixture has started bubbling again. I'll take it off the heat and I'll just pour this into a container to cool uncovered. You don't have to put plastic wrap on the surface. And I want to cool this down to just above room temperature, about 68 to 70 degrees. So let those cakes bake, let this cool, and we'll be frosting and using some sprinkles before you know it. Later. All right, I've got my cooled boiled milk base and I have two cups of butter in my mixer. 
The butter is just cooler than room temperature. The idea when it comes to blending the boiled milk with the butter is that the temperature should be within a few degrees of each other. If you find your frosting curdles, that's usually a sign that your butter or your filling are too cold, in which case you just have to warm it up over a water bath. She starts by softening the butter cubes, and when done... There we go, my butter is nice and smooth. So I add my boiled milk base in three additions, a little at a time and beating well after each addition. The reason I start with slightly cooled butter is by the time I beat it to smooth it out and fluff it up, it has warmed up to room temperature. I'll add a few drops of purple coloring. And there we go, I'll stir the rest in by hand. She removes the bowl from the mixer. All right, stir right to the bottom to make sure my colors works in. And now it's time to assemble. If you're assembling a birthday cake and it's a hot summer day, you can always chill your cake layers. It helps the frosting stick on better and you'll get cleaner, straighter lines. So I'm just gonna pull each layer from the fridge. Each frosted is stacked. You wanna spread the frosting from the inside out and try not to break contact with the frosting as you spread it too much. The more you lift your palette knife away, you might pull away crumbs with you. But you'll notice these cake layers aren't crumbly at all. She now frosts the side. Next layer. As she rotates the cake. Once you've got your crumb coat, your masking done, you wanna give the cake a chance to chill before you do the final decorating. And of course, the final coating on the outside. Later. Once you've let that base coat chill for a little bit, it's easier to put on your piping detail. She pats sprinkles onto the a side. A pie plate is best to hold the sprinkles. That way it catches any that tumble off the cake. Creating a wavy border around the bottom. Let's do some piping right on top. After centering the cake on a serving platter. Now that's a birthday cake. I think a kid of any age would be thrilled to have this on their birthday. She pipes rosettes. And just imagine if you get the kids involved in decorating it, just Expect a carnival of sprinkles everywhere. You can't have too many sprinkles. But what you can have is a very special occasion of your birthday. Happy birthday. She smiles.